Official deadline for finding what kind of inquiry will be held into the arrest of Fredericton blogger Charles LeBlanc. According to the city, city administrator, Chris McPherson would be deciding by the end of the month what sort of review should be held to investigate the relationship between LeBlanc and the Fredericton police force. Now, concerns were raised after LeBlanc was arrested and his computer equipment seized. LeBlanc was told he was facing a charge of criminal libel. However, after several weeks, the Attorney General's office said it would not be laying a charge. Now, we sent an email to Mr. McPherson yesterday asking what he's concluded, but we haven't heard back from him. The Canadian Civil Liberties Association has been watching this case from the beginning and recently sent an email to Chris McPherson offering advice on his inquiry decision. Abby Deshman is the Director of Public Safety Programs for the CCLA and she is on the line now. Good morning, thanks for joining us. Good morning, my pleasure. What was the motivation for sending Chris McPherson the email? Well, this is a case we've been following for some time. Um, we've written to Chief McKnight about uh, the appropriateness of charging people for criminal libel, something to charge that's been found unconstitutional and has major freedom of speech concerns. Um, and so we have received back encouraging statements, both from Chief McKnight and messages from the city uh, that they would be looking into this and we just wanted to make sure that the inquiry process itself was something that would contribute to finding out what happens and restoring public faith and confidence in policing. And what are the key points you made in the email? Well, these inquiries, if they're going to be effective, there's several qualities that we think they need. First of all, um, they need to be impartial and independent. Uh, the whole point of this is to find out what happened, to remove it from the police who have an interest in this, uh, to remove it from anyone really who has a, a vested interest in, in how this turns out and, and find out what happened. So the reviewer has to have, has to have the confidence of the public. It has to be someone who has not been involved in this and, and is going to take a really impartial and hard look at the facts. Uh, second, we made the point that uh, this person has to have access to documents. Many of the um, public inquiry statutes that we have give uh, investigators a wide range of investigative tools, including access to a whole bunch of documents. Um, they can subpoena witnesses. If you're going to be examining actions in law enforcement, much of that information is confidential. Much of that information by its nature is not disclosed to the public. Uh, if someone's going to be reviewing things, they need to be able to access all of those documents to be able to properly determine what happened. Um, we made points about uh, members of the public having a reasonable and meaningful opportunity to make written and oral submissions. Uh, also, uh, frequently what happens is uh, the police or government officials that are implicated have access to lawyers and members of the public who are directly affected do not, uh, which can be a really uneven playing field when you go into public inquiries or other types of reviews. And um, so that needs to be considered usually in public inquiries, uh, the parties are for it, are given lawyers, um, and uh, if that doesn't happen, it can, it can really be an unbalanced playing field. And then finally, the mandate is a really important part of whether this review is going to be effective. Um, often, uh, it's decided in the mandate how wide is this reviewer going to be looking? Are they going to be forward-looking? Are they going to be backward-looking? Uh, how much of the conduct at issue are they going to be able to review? We know that there has been, you know, this is, this is not an isolated incident. There have been several interactions between Mr. LeBlanc and the police. Um, and that he was actually involved in a case brought against a Fredericton police officer, a, a criminal charge. So that history, I think it definitely forms part of the public concern that's been, uh, that's been apparent over this case. And we think it should be part of what goes into the review in order to inform the outcome. Okay, what are, the, what are the key questions you think this inquiry or this review has to answer? Well, obviously we need an examination of this charge. So this is what prompted most of the public outrage. Um, so the charge of criminal libel, who decided it was appropriate, what were the policies and procedures that went into this, 
policy, are those policies and procedures adequate going forward, and really why was this charge brought? Uh, so those are the you know most central features of, of this, uh, this incident. But at the same time, I think you could expand it beyond. We now know that Mr. Levant was recently arrested for trespass at the or a trespass-related offense at the provincial legislature. And um, any time, you know, as a civil liberties advocate, any time someone's arrested for trespass at a public institution during normal business operating hours, which is what I understand here, um, we immediately get concerned about freedom of expression, access to government, etc. So I, I really do think that um, there needs to be a broader scope to this to look at, uh, you know, interactions between someone who's very critical of the police force and how the police have dealt with that individual. Now, my understanding is that the charge that uh, was going to be laid, but never was, uh, was approved by a judge. Would the inquiry then be looking at the, the judge's conduct, how the judge handled himself or herself in this case? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that would be an appropriate thing for the inquiry to look at. If we're going to be looking at um, the process for charging and criminal libel charges and, you know, charging individuals with offenses that uh, we firmly believe are unconstitutional, have now been, you know, looked at by the Attorney General and, and you know, this has been found unconstitutional in several jurisdictions, um, I think all the actors that were involved in that process need to have their conduct looked at. Uh, if there's a judge that's been involved in that and uh, judges are part of the process, then they need to be part of what's examined. Um, what about the forum in which this inquiry or this review occurs? Does it need to be public? Does it need the members of the public have to be involved as, as observers? Yeah, I'd say absolutely. Um, you always have provisions to address privacy concerns. But they're usually very narrow in scope. Um, and because of the public interest, one of the things you want from this review is transparency. You, you need to have the review itself be transparent in order to restore public confidence. If this review is not transparent, if it doesn't allow public access, if it doesn't open itself up to media, both in terms of what's being presented to it and its processes for decision making, I would really worry about the ability of the review to restore public confidence in the policing system. If the responsibility for the inquiry or the review was given to uh, a member of another police force, the RCMP or another no. police force, for example, would that satisfy no. your concerns about impartiality? You know, I honestly think the the amount of public outcry that has happened over this case, um, we need to have someone who's removed from the police community. Uh, and that's not to say that other policemen, other other members of other police forces can't provide independent reviews, but uh, you have to not only provide an independent review, but you have to have the public confidence that that review is actually independent. Um, and I think, at least from my sense of the public concern over this, we should really be getting somebody who's independent from policing, who obviously understands these issues as well, versus is able and capable of, of, uh, of heading an inquiry, um, but, but is independent from the policing community in order to restore public confidence. I appreciate your time this morning. Thanks very much. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Uh, Abby Deshman is the Director of Public Safety Programs for the Canadian Civil Liberties Association. Any comments, please get in touch. Here's how. 451-4100, 1-800-561-4222. You can also email me at info am at fredericton.cbc.ca. You can talk to me on Twitter at my address, which is at S-E-G-U-I-N-C-B-C. Or if you like, you can comment on our Information Morning Fredericton Facebook page. Ten minutes before 8 o'clock.